creates a warehouse request. Okay, that is um, outbound delivery order or inbound delivery. If you change anything from the AWM side or on the ECC side, it again you know goes and reflects back to the other system. Okay, then you can split the deliveries if required. Okay, so if you want to change the output delivery of input delivery into multiple deliveries, you can split it. And then finally, when you confirm that you have done all the activities in your warehouse for that particular delivery, a good issue or a confirmation goes to ECC. Good issue document gets posted in ECC. So, I think we put your so there is a topic where we will be covering the purchase order and production order integration. So that we will see subsequent sessions. I mean, now we'll just uh, focus on the delivery, um, the uh, delivery uh, relevant data. So just to explain you what all data I have with the header and item for a for a particular delivery in EWM. I just log on to EWM and open the delivery we created on uh, Friday. Just give me a minute. I'll just uh, reset my password. I think there is some issue. Okay. In case we'll try to in the meantime see the ECC delivery that we created. So we created this delivery and you can see in the stock placement tab it's for our plant and store location and since it was assigned to warehouse yeah, it, and that was EWM managed it got distributed. So in EWM ECC delivery you know the main points to note here are you know, we have uh, you know a configurable entry you know, at the header level and at item level. So the header level based on which you know most of your settings are determined like number ranges and which uh, delivery okay that's the 
which in delivery, which kind of delivery it is. Okay, its uh, delivery type is EL. Okay, so this delivery type will be integrated to a document type in EWM. Okay, so your delivery header level information, you know, mostly are controlled through this delivery type. If you get time, just go through the configuration of delivery type. Then at item level, it is the item category, you know, which is the uh, most influencing um, parameter based on which, you know, a lot of setting is done for your uh, item, okay. So, um, okay, by the time I get access to the system, I'll just show you uh, typical delivery in EWM. Okay, so the delivery that we created that day, if you just open the header data, you will see a document category and a document type. So there is no delivery type, something like delivery type here. Okay, so it's only document type and document categories. Then there are some more details which you can store in your uh, inbound delivery header like good receiving point which is the shipping point, okay, the, the scheduling data for example the shipping or the delivery date, the weights volume, the partners involved, okay, and this document, this is valid for the entire document as we know the header data means this data is valid for all the um, items. Okay. So just again we'll have a look here. So you can see uh, the input terms which I was telling you that day. Uh, terms agreed with the vendors, warehouse door, means of transport, how this is moved across can see the various statuses for your deliveries okay. and uh, you can see the creation date I think somewhere we can also see the you know delivery dates I think we have means of transport input terms creation date. I think we, once we go into the system, we'll see some more details, like our uh, delivery date and all those things. So main thing what we are going to see here, GR office is your good receiving point, which again is very important. Shipping point which you had created as a good receiving point in EWM. Okay. So our main aim here is um, to uh, to be see to be see, to you know verify how this document type is mapped to delivery type in each of ECC, okay? And what this document type means, what this document category means, we we want to basically understand the definition and use of these two um, fields in the inbound delivery, which are very important. Okay. So a document category. Let's say for example we start first with a document category. Okay, the very first uh, um, field which we are going to talk about now is the document category. So, this document category is, um, so just give me a minute, I'm just getting a password reset, so I'm passing on the details. Sorry. So, document category. So you can see, uh, as you saw in my screenshot, a document header is basically, you know, two main, you know, technical field we could see there. One was the document type, and the other was the document category. Now, this document category, what it does, it, it categorizes the delivery document. Okay. So based on the, you know, for a particular process, what all documents are created, 
okay so it kind of differentiates that based on the document okay so just let me try logging in now uh, my password is reset now So we will not go into, you know, for understanding this uh, delivery integration, we will not go in other kind of document, we will just focus on, let's say, an uh, inborn delivery or an uh, inborn document. Okay. So you can see, you know, for this inbound, it created two kind of documents for me. Okay, one was um, the inborn delivery notification and the other was inborn delivery. So you can see the inbound delivery notification is same like uh, ECC delivery number. Okay. So what system did whenever I create a delivery in ECC, it creates a delivery notification here. Okay, which is kind of which copies all data from the delivery of ECC. Okay, and uses all those data, uh, whichever whatever data is relevant for EWM, it passes on to this notification. Okay. Then system what it does, it converts this notification to inbound delivery automatically. Okay. So in the background it does and that notification is converted into inbound delivery. You can see a number given here. That number uh, is internally generated. So by conversion of inbound delivery to in notification, inbound delivery system what it does is checks all the configuration, the master data, the validity or uh, validity of certain fields or um, checks if the uh, certain validations are correct that if this is the uh, product then this should be the you know details we have received or it will also check you know things like your shipping point okay shipping office it will also check our uh, you know uh, warehouse is correctly mapped okay so Let's say, for example, I will not go into any, um, you know, outbound delivery, for example, but we can quickly see in outbound delivery also we have something called as um, outbound delivery request, like inbound delivery notification, then that gets converted into outbound delivery order, and then we have a third one where we have outbound delivery. So outbound delivery request, like inbound delivery notification, are something which gets directly created once we create the delivery and this notification get you know converted into inborn delivery considering all the config master data of VWM and creates it you know inborn delivery which is now ready for to be processed in EWM. Okay. So coming back to what this document category is. So you can see this document category here is IDR. Okay, here it is PDI. Okay, if we go into our bond, let me try. Warehouses. Okay, let me take this warehouse. Let me try to give you another, you know, maybe by help of example, it will be easy to understand. So, so if you see this for this particular urban delivery, you know, the document category was ODR, then Here, the document category is PDO. Then, urban delivery will, you know, have another document category. Okay. So you can see for one process there are three documents. In inbound one process there are two documents. 
So these processes or these number of documents are defined for a particular process in standard EWM. Okay. So now inbound delivery will have two documents. One is IDR and PDI. Okay. So each of this separate document for a particular process is defined by a document category. So this will have a different document category, this will have a different document category. Both are belonging to the same process. Okay. Same same inbound process, same kind of delivery, but you know, different documents are given different kind of uh, nomenclature to differentiate that. Yes, this is the notification, this is the delivery. In a, in a business sense, regular business sense, you will not be using notification. Notification, if everything goes right, everything it will be always getting converted into inbound delivery. In outbound also, you won't be much using request, but you know, system has created technically, you know, these fields to differentiate one document from another. Okay for a one particular process. So you can see these are all, these two are related, yeah. And these are same. The same documents, but same uh, different to same ECC delivery, but they are created as different documents on the EWM side. Okay. So there are some more document categories. Let's say for example we saw inbound, outbound we you know I mean if we have outbound delivery we see that that there is another document category for outbound delivery OD yes we have here so this is this will be FDO okay. so we just saw you know that there are we saw FDO we saw IDR we saw ODR we saw PDA PDO so similarly we can have for internal movements we can have POR SPC WMR okay so we'll, we'll see in the internal processing so these document categories are internally created by SAP we cannot create them. These are predefined by the system and we cannot change them. Okay? So, so this classifies, you know, document category. What is classifies? The different documents. Okay? For a particular process. The process is same. Inbound process for a production order or for a purchase order, outbound for a sale order or outbound for a sales process or anything, you know? So the process remains same, only differentiates the different documents that get created for that particular process. Again, we don't have any control created by SAP. We just, you know, use them uh, to, you know, identify what kind of delivery it is, what kind of delivery document it is. Okay. At table level, definitely we need to know whether it's uh, what kind of document we are referring. So document category kind of helps us in that case. Okay. So again, now let's come to the document type. Okay. So basically, document type does not is not identified independently. Document type always, you know, uh, is referred to in reference to document category. So let's say, for example, we have a document type I and B. So you can see, you know, document type I and B. This is I and B. Notification will also have I and B. Okay. Same way, not bound. You know, the entire document will have OUTB. So, I hope now you might have understood. You know, what is the main feature of document type? This document type basically is integrated to your delivery type of ECC. The entire three documents or two documents will have the same document type. Okay. So it basically defines the business process used for the document. So OUTB is outbound delivery for sale order, INB is inbound delivery for purchase orders. Let's say we talk about inbound delivery for a production order or inbound delivery for a very specific process, let's say for winter consignment, we define a different document type. So we can create let's say INB, C or for inbound delivery for production there might be INB in IMP, INP instead of B. Okay, so so it basically represents a document in EWM, each combination of document type and document category. Okay, so what we'll see is you know where to create this document type and how do we integrate this document type to you know ECC delivery type. Okay, so these are the two main fields in your deliveries. We are also going to see similar fields at the item level. Okay, so we just saw a typical header data. 
Okay. So if we want to define a particular uh, document type, where do we define it? So we define it in each of the relevant nodes. Let's say we are talking about good receipt. In one delivery. Same way you will have it in good issue. One delivery. And then in that you will have manual settings. Here also you will have manual settings to determine the defined document type item type. And here also you will have manual settings to define document type and item type. Okay. So let's come to this. Uh, you also have wizard, you know, based on which you can copy and edit the information you need. So here we define a document type. Okay, I'll repeat again, we don't create a uh, document category, okay? So here you can create this, so let's say INB PDI. Okay, so this is a document type belonging to this category outside, you know, it's always used in group for definition. So say we can have a different setting for a different document then, you know, like uh, INB notification you can have a different set of settings you can see these profiles are different for IMB IDR and for IMB PDI okay. so your standard will have all these profiles maintained okay so you do not have to change them until unless you need them for a specific purpose okay and uh, I will come back to this. Um, okay, I explain you now it's what this profile means. So basically, you know, since we are into this, I'll just give you a brief background of you know what this profile means. So basically, you know, if you see, uh, if we define a document type, the same way we have item type. We define them, you know, we have this action profile, status profile, text profile, field control profile, you know, partner profile, day, incompletion, quantity offset, so reference document and process profile. These are all the relevant settings that you can do for a particular document category. So if you want to change the field control, any field you want to make it mandatory or you want to change it from mandatory display, you will work with this. If you have different kind of text, if you want to have a separate text profile or separate kind of text identification for a delivery, you come here. Okay. If you don't want some statuses, like you don't want unloading status, you don't want to see uh, packing status or any other status for instance, so you come and set it here. Or if you don't want any status to be recorded in the system, you change at this place. Okay, you'll have to change it here. Action profile it governs. It's a PPF basically based on which how your outputs are created for your delivery. Okay, if you want to print something or if you want to trigger task creation for your delivery or anything like that. Okay. Similarly, how your dates are managed, how your partners are managed for your delivery. Okay, how your quantity. Um, setting takes place, you know, how your quantity um, surrounding and many other things for your quantity, how they are you know, changed, you can map here. Reference document profile controls, you know, what kind of document you can use it as a reference and where you can without reference create a document. Process profile controls, you know, that which process it is, let's say it's for inbound for purchase order. So. It should not allow me to, this, this document I should not be allowed to use inborn for production orders. Okay, so any process relevant settings can be mapped here. Okay, others are like, I think these are all your process controls, let's say, coming from this process profile. So, since it is inbound, it is saying production disallowed, scrapping not allowed, pickup is outbound again, not allowed, invoice, there is no invoice in inbound, not allowed. Correction delivery not allowed. Creation manually allowed, but producer document, you know, 
it's, it's allowed, allowed to pay with, with reference to something. So these are all settings coming from here. These are, you know, basically uh, profiles, we call them in EWM. Same way, this is a document type level, the same way at item type level also we can create them. Okay. So basically, I'll just show you, you know, we just saw these all which functions. And if we just see any one of them, okay. okay let me see any, see any one of them. Let's say I'll just show you this uh, field control profile. I mean. I'll just go directly from here and see if we can. All these profiles are you know, basically stored at the same place. So we'll just go there for one and you can just see the path and try out, you know, uh, going through those nodes. So you can see all these profiles. You can get it in process, process, delivery processing. So this is process profile, date, partner, actions, incompletion, field control. Yeah, so I was just about to take the field control profile. So let's see. I think this was the one which we are using for our IMB. So you can see, you know, you can control this. Okay. So these are the fields. Okay, and these are the header fields or wherever they are. You know. So. <laughs> So you can see, you know, that most of the settings system is not allowing you to do it here. Okay, because um, okay, let me explain you why it is not allowing us to do for certain and why. So this is the field control profile. Okay, so uh, this every profile basically which we use, you know, it's a combination of system and customer profile okay so system profile means there are certain fields which which system will tell you which should be mandatory or optional or display okay and you cannot change those fields customer profile means system allows you you know to change certain fields it's like a user exit yeah so customer specific you can write your code like you do it in a web same way your customer specific profile you know you will be allowed to change something you know within that particular configuration. So not all fields are allowed for you to go and change, but only you know certain fields are allowed by the system for you to you know go and change your settings. Okay? So we can see that this is the field control profile we assign to our to our uh, document type. Okay? And for this field control every every you know every new entry that you create, any new profile you create, you have to say which is a system profile. So system profile are again created by SAP and we cannot, you know, change them, right? So these are system profiles that, you know, based on the different processes, let's say inbound delivery for standard item, for packing item, return item, what kind of inbound delivery you are doing, or inbound delivery notification. So it is system
Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes sir. Uh, now we can hear. Now we can hear. What is it? Hello. You are on, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I just lost my connection in between. So, okay, I was talking about, you know, the configuration related to your uh, profiles, the different profiles which are there. So, these profiles, again, you know, are very important. I was uh, about to explain you the profile relevant setting. Let's say, for example, you are into field control. So, anything you define, you say, what is the system control parameter for that? So, this will control, you know, some fields which are allowed for you to change and which are not allowed for you to change okay so you can see that uh, there are so many fields which, which, are, which are belonging to your okay and let's say for example let us take any field um, this is for uh, let me take any field which I am able to modify it Let's say weight, which identification, which number, part ELD. So here you can see, you know, we can give based on the status of a delivery okay we can give whether it's a display field or So for any particular status, whether you know you want to make it as a display field, okay, so you just click this. So you can see, you know, if the warehouse activity started or completed. Okay, so let's say for example there is a group called field status ended. So in that case you will see, you know, all the fields which are with the status will have only display. Okay. So, um, so basically assigned to a particular group. Okay, and through that group, whether you can change it or only display it, you can mark it. Okay. So, it's not like we have it in ECC. We have you know four options. You know we say that it's a it's kind of a optional display or anything we just have this with field whether we want to display or not system will you know uh, control whether they are you know editable or not okay so you know this field group for a particular kind of field you know which it controls what kind of uh, settings we are doing for a particular field. Okay. So let me take some more example just to so you can see you know permitted fields these this fields you know it's not allowing you to create any entry here because you know these are the standard fields. 
if we want to create a Z field, then we will have to you know, append the structure and then it will automatically come here. Okay. So, I mean, this is just an example of one one way of doing it. There are many more, you know, like, um, for example, your process code profile. Okay. So, let's say, for example, the process code profile, every, this is the profile which we created let's say this is the profile we created for process code it has an internally system assigned you know this is a system profile so any profile that you will see here will have a internal system profile okay and then in that it will see these are not allowed by you to change okay these are managed by SAP so it's not allowing you whether you can change this change this if you want change this change that okay so you know this is like uh, what is I007 you can say like adjust delivery quantity to zero you can do activated functionality inactivated make it default so all this you know process related settings you can do here okay So these are all the process codes basically which you can use or so which one you want to use or which one you want don't want to use. So these are standard or these are not applicable for your particular process. Okay, so it's not coming up here for you to select or they might come in default in your drop down but you are not allowed to control these four. Okay, whereas others you can do. You can also create your own process code. Okay, and this is process code profile then you also have um, this profile process profile you know this I was telling you uh, so again you know you can see any any you know profile you have to create when once you try to create it will ask you what is the process system profile so based on that system profile, some will be allowed by you to be changed, some will not be allowed. Okay. So let's say for example this one, I'm not I'm not allowed to change anything. Okay, because this is belong to inbound. So let me see if I say new. See, as soon as you create new, you know, certain fields are not allowed by you to change because this is the system profile, you know, which will control whether, you know, you can change these fields or not or which fields are applicable for you to change as part of the process. So, I'm saying I'm using it for my inbound process. So, you know, the whole idea is to tell you, you know, that these profiles will control different, different things for delivery, but they have a internal, they have, whenever they are created, they have to be assigned to a system profile which again controls which settings you should change, which settings you should not change. Okay. So this is a typical example of you know how uh, configurations are done for a delivery type or uh, sorry document type or item type which are defined in EWM. Okay. Then I think um, same thing, you know, just showing you for good C process. We'll have for good issue, for internal, for, you know, all those places, you know, we'll have our separate settings. Okay, like I showed for good C, good issue, same way for internal also we'll have, okay, the same kind of uh, document type and document category and then they, those document types and document categories will be defined here. So anything which you want to change for your delivery header data, you know, uh, so that's the place where you go and change okay? or try to explore. Then, um, okay. second thing I'd like to cover is your item category. Okay? So we are aware of document type. We have, we can also see some fields in the item type. I mean, just to uh, give you a brief idea on the
total data can be stored. So let's you know also see some data on the item level. So document item, as we know, it's the information relevant to a particular item. So this is item data, okay, and this is item detail data, okay. So for item we have these tabs, and then some more tabs over here. Okay. So we store information like what is the product, what is the quantity. Okay, so what is the process type? This is like your movement type you have in WM. So you can see the owner, the party enter list for this comes from the config. You know, we created B and eight thousand as our business partner and assigned the config. So see it is coming from there. Stock type, it comes from availability group bin, you know, and item level status. And same like the you know header, we have two important fields here, item category and item type. Okay. So as the name suggests, you know, item category will not be creating like document category will not be creating in system. It is created internally by SAP and determined by SAP. What we can do is we can create and determine item type and we can do settings related to configuration settings for a delivery item type. Okay. So you can see also tolerances as well here. Yeah? Delivery priority, shipping conditions. You know, you remember when we were mapping the table, we mapped these tables just to say that, you know, EWM should have these entries. So here, you know, you can see they are getting copied out from ECC, so they get stored here. Okay. So there are many more things, you know, we can store for a particular product. You can see all the details here, quantities and text and the weight, volume, all those things you can store here. Okay. So these are your yeah, header and item data. You just go through them and understand what all things can be uh, noticed there. Okay. So now what this item category means, as I said, you know, this item categories are predefined by SAP like document category and we cannot change them. Okay. So Basically, uh, this item category, you can see in system there are five, which is one is for standard delivery item, one is for packaging item, one is for return item, then for text item and value item. Value item is only used in the outbound delivery. So 90% for your standard delivery item, you know, standard delivery process, you will see DLV. Okay, same way if it is a packing item or a returns item, then you will see, you know, what kind of item it is. It's for uh, it's for packing so that you can, you know, uh, store it separately or it's for returns. You want to, uh, it's for, you know, uh, for return process, customer return or vendor return process, you get RET. Some items are only for text, so you have only the text information. You know, so in that case, you have TXT. So it all depends based on your complete business process for which, what kind of delivery you are processing. Okay, based on that, your item types are, you know, item categories are kind of appearing in your delivery. Okay, so you don't have to do them, they will come on into their own. Okay, and just to give you a Idea you can see item type generally you know it's DLV here for inward notification. Same way it will be DLV for your delivery and inbound notification both. If you want to see for outbound as well, it will remain the same because we are kind of processing standard inbound or standard outbound. You can see here, uh, it's again DLV. Okay. 
So your outbound will always have also have standard outbound will also have DLV because your items are the same. Uh, then we have item type which define the business characteristics of our item in a delivery document. So the item categories and these are the item types. So you can see for inbound there is a different item type for outbound there is different posting chain there is different there will be a different for out for uh, um, stock transfer. Okay. So item types define the business characteristics of our item in a delivery document. Let's say you know for example this is our outbound. So you can see whole outbound will have ODLV. So depending on your process okay so again you know you, you can see everything is ODLV it doesn't get changed like a document category okay so if you go in inbound IDLV okay so like you know your document type that we had you know with changes based on the process they have IDLV yeah so we have you know like this document type it changes based on and it remains same for the entire process documents I and B. So it defines the entire process for uh, your delivery. But if in case you want to have a special item processing for the item for your particular process, let's say for example inbound delivery from vendor, we create a customized item type. Okay, so we what we'll do is we have to why there is a need to define a customized item type because let's say for example there are some item specific settings you have done okay let's say you have a different field control or different process indicator or different action profile or different you know you, we saw all those fields here right we, we saw all the settings which can be done for a particular document type or item type so if you want to change any of the standard settings then what you will do is will change IDL V2 let's say Z IDL okay and make that relevant settings so basically what this item type controls is you know it's it's uh, it's your uh, if you want to do any configuration you can change your item type standard in bond you can change it to anything like Z and you know we can determine that Z coming up instead of you know, standard so you know any way you want to change any of the settings then you create your own customized item type and then you know, we do a determination we change the determination settings and then we get a you know uh, our Z item type for entire process so it's basically like your item level basically your document something like document type at item level which is same for the entire document but which you can you know uh, configure it based on your client specific requirement okay but item category we cannot configure it okay so this item type basically defines the business characteristics so based on your business process you created okay let's say it's for inbound outbound you have one and let's say inbound outbound and posting you know whatever document you have you don't use the standard you create your own so you may create Z IDLV or Z ODLV and you know any field selection you want to change or any uh, incompletion settings you want to change or any uh, text data you want to change or any output data you want to change so you can change for your customized item type so creating customized delivery type and item type document type and item type are pretty common and in next session what we are going to see is after defining this Z how do we map them so what are the mapping table so let's say you create your Z item type and Z document type so how do you map that in system okay so how do system for a particular process or for a particular product or for a particular influencing parameter how the Z are determined and how they are used so we'll see that tomorrow the the, uh, the interface table okay so today what you can do is um, just go through all these tables, all this configuration that I have covered today. Just try to understand, you know, uh, where they are created and what is the, you know, uh, what is the advantage of, you know, using them.
and how do we configure them just go through the relevant node not required to go into detail in try creating one and changing one we'll see that later okay but try to understand how the how the you know what are the definition and how they are different for inborn and outborn and or what is the definition and what basically what relevance they have you know for a particular EWM document okay so just go through their definition and what all thing what all profiles we have and the, the config node of those profile try running through them try understanding system profile custom profile and uh, tomorrow we'll see the interface table okay and then tomorrow second half we'll start the op structure config uh, review we already created the op structure we'll quickly review that tomorrow what are the configuration structure element thing op structure element thing and then we'll start working on developing a op structure with an EWM okay so uh, I think we'll stop here today we have I mean uh, reached our time so we'll stop here today we'll catch up again tomorrow if you have any questions then we can discuss that okay. so any questions before we end for today on this or your weekend practice or anything yeah I run the busy here uh, yeah can you uh, yeah, this is regarding the previous session that uh, we have uh, like uh, that configuration part and that I am not able to generating that distribution model ERP to EWM and the, the another like uh, creating of customer uh, for the same name. I am not able to create and not find the organization group as a plant. So uh, there's a couple of doubt I have. So let me know like free time or like we can discuss on to this. I think I, I think others can leave if they have no questions. I will discuss with Prashant and you know sort out his queries. If you guys don't have anything or any questions, then you may leave. That's fine. Okay, okay Prashant. I think uh, yesterday you. Uh, uh, I have replied to your email where I have showed you, you know, how why your distribution model was not moved. Have you seen my email? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are on email. Uh, just one question. Uh, do we need to create the distribution model? No, you don't have to create it. Your basis team has to give you an active integration model. Yeah, but... Uh, not a distribution um, model. Means, means I didn't understand how to pick uh, the correct distribution model. Yeah, so I mean, just try out. I mean, I, I just went by the name. So which one looks standard? I tried two, three, and I found the, you know, one where it was working. Or you can okay, take I with your business, you know, just to ask them, you know, which one is active. Okay, okay. I I thought uh, it will be, uh, it will be a standard distribution model uh, with the name warehouse. So I kind no. of uh, it, it is different for different system. Okay, okay. Okay. What was the other question? Regarding customer uh, creation. Surprise has other question. Uh, regarding customer creation when we are creating customer. Mm -hmm. So you selected that uh, organization group as a plant, right? Organization group as a plant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, account group. So. Yeah, this one. Correct. So, yeah, we had taken plant here. So, what's the issue? No, no. Uh, create a new one and then account group. When we are, you are going to select that account group. Uh, create new one. That is G zero one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this account group. Uh, first, uh, first uh, that drop box. Drop box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which one we have to select? You select as a plant. 
PL and T you selected. So you don't have this in your system? No. No, no. You don't have anything for PL and yeah? No. Okay, use zero 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 one four two five two. Yeah, I use that, but is uh, like asking for that uh, maintaining that uh, ranges, and I maintain the same which you maintain in your uh, uh, demonstration, uh, like xx uh -huh. for that, but it's not allow me to create that customer again. Uh, is it giving you some error or something? Uh, asking that that uh, maintain the inter you know that number ranges is not defined. So no. We will quickly create it for you. Yes, giving a looks like I'm just the standard one. Anyway, so you use this. Let's see how it goes. What is the name you want to be into with? Yeah, any name? What you can do is come here. Uh, financial accounting view. Account receivable as amount payable. Let's go to account customer master and master data. Preparation for grading. Um, number ranges for account group. So you can see it is having for one here. And what are the number ranges? A A to Z Z Z it's not a four character yes. So what I will do is you create a new interval let's say xx a to something like that external How, what is the length you are looking for? 5 to 6 care. What is the length? 5 to 6. 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.
See now it is allowing you. Okay. Thanks for. So I've changed it to Z Y. Change it to Z one once you're done. Yeah. Sure. So you change it to Z one once you're done. Oh, Iron, listen this. Yes, sir. Also, also there are you know, many issues in the EC system like um, when we compare the table, those uh, four tables, currency and all. Mm -hmm. So at the time there are many entries which are existing in ECC but not exist in EWM. So do we need mm -hmm. to manually enter those entries in uh, the don't, table? Don't do as part of this demo system, you know, because if we face an issue in our testing, we'll maintain it later. But you know, maybe that's for you know when you go, do it for your customer. That time you won't have to set it at the time of your presentation. But yeah, you can avoid doing it now. So if at all you come across a situation, then you can try it. Uh, also, okay. Also, uh, while activating the BC sets, mm -hmm. so uh, it is ending with warning. Yeah, that's. We fine. are not sure. Okay, warning are okay, right? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, warnings are okay. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, so currently we are uh, means we have not completed uh, all the settings, but uh, we are mm -hmm. uh, creating the business partner and uh, sifting. So mm -hmm. uh, we will try those uh, those two configurations today, and if you have any issues, we will. Let you know tomorrow. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. No, yeah, that's fine. You know, we can. You know, I've just. We can. Uh, you know, after the session, you know, I'm open for any questions. So, if you can keep your questions open for up till after the class, if you don't want to send email, we can have a you know screen share and do it together. Okay. Uh, Ron, yeah. Ron, yeah, One more small doubt I have. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever we are going to create a business system and assign the business system, is it like logical system of EWM or we have to assign a logical system of uh, ECC when we are going to assign business system? The logical system of ECC. ECC, logical system of ECC. Yeah, because, yeah, so that from that log, basically business system is a representation of your ECC system. So okay. this logical system, uh, deliveries coming from this logical system, should be stored as uh, the table for the delivery will store that particular business. Okay. Thanks for the timing. We will let you know once we have completed all the integration part and settings. Yes, yes. Thank yes. you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye.